Hey everyone, today we're going to take a quick look at Synology's Quick Connect, how you can configure it, how you might want to use it, and why you might want to use it. But we're not really going to look at um, the security of Quick Connect. So that'll be a different video. Um, that's not to say that Quick Connect is or is not secure. There is a white paper for it. You should absolutely read it if this is something that you intend on using. But the important thing that I want to highlight here is that this is not the only way of doing it. So if you want to be super secure, you probably want to access your NAS using a VPN. Uh, I have a tutorial on how you can set up OpenVPN on your NAS, and I'll leave a pop-up for that now. That's one option. Another option is opening ports on your router and using Synology's firewall to try and limit access. Um, that option is fine as well. It's just that it gets a little tougher if you aren't sure the exact IP ranges or individual IP addresses that have to access the NAS because at that point you have to open it up to a little bit more exposure, but we're not looking at the security of this. You should definitely look at those other alternatives before you implement Quick Connect. Um, but we're going to take a look at how you can set it up now. So Synology's Quick Connect is incredibly easy to set up, and that's its main selling point. It's so easy to set up, it's a few checkboxes, and at that point, everything just kind of works. Um, so you can open up the control panel, and then you can go to Quick Connect. At this point, if you haven't already set up a uh, Synology user account, you'll have to do that now. But as soon as you do, you're going to see the screen that I'm showing here. And basically, you just have to enable Quick Connect and you have to uh, create a Quick Connect ID. Now, this ID is how you're going to access some of the services that Quick Connect allows you to access. So make sure you pick something that you're going to remember. At this point, you can select Apply and Quick Connect is actually already set up. So that's all it is. It's that easy. Uh, we're now going to take a look at the advanced features, though, because you might want to limit access to certain things which is one of the benefits of Quick Connect. So the top options, I normally uncheck the second option, which is automatically create port forwarding rules. This is mainly just because I don't want any devices on my network automatically creating port forwarding rules on my router. So for that reason, I leave this as disabled. Now the top option, what it does is if you are trying to access, say DSM, for example, uh, when you connect to the URL in that general section, you're going to be using Synology's relay service to automatically connect to your NAS. So basically, it's able to tell that a port is not opened on your router, and it's going to use Synology's relay service to ensure that you're able to access it. So for that reason, I always keep that top option enabled, but that's the only real setting you have to configure. Now at the bottom here, you're going to see the permissions. Now this is where it's going to be totally dependent on you. So you're able to access all of Synology's mobile applications using uh, Quick Connect. So basically, if you are using DS Audio, if you set that up on your NAS, you're able to download the app and you're able to put in the Quick Connect information and you are able to use that application as long as the checkbox is enabled here. Now, the unfortunate thing is that you are not able to host things on like Docker, for example. So if you're using Jellyfin or Plex or whatever, you're not able to use uh, Quick Connect to access those services, but you are able to use it to access Synology services. So basically, the scope is somewhat narrow, but if you are using DS Audio or DS File, for example, you can use Quick Connect to access that service. So the first checkbox is what that's for. Now the second is for Synology Drive Server. Now I have a tutorial on how you can use Synology Drive Server. I'll leave a pop-up for that now. Uh, but Synology Drive Server is really awesome. I've been using it for a long time now. I'm very happy with it. It's best compared to something like OneDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox, but basically you can have your own cloud uh, service running and all of the data will be stored on your NAS. So if you are using Synology's Drive Server and you don't have a VPN set up, or you don't want to open any ports on your router, this is a great way to ensure that you're able to access your documents from anywhere in the world. So that is the option for Synology Drive Server. File sharing, I just created a tutorial on that last week. I'll leave a pop-up for that now, but basically if you want to share files with uh, someone else outside of your local network, you can share a file from your NAS and they can download it on the other side. This allows you to use Quick Connect to do that so you don't have to open the DSM port on your router. The last is DSM. If you want to access DSM using a Quick Connect URL, you can allow that as well. Now, these are the only permissions that you have available to you. So basically, whatever you set up here, whatever you check off, is what's going to be accessible outside of your local network using Quick Connect. 
If you don't intend on accessing DSM, for example, you should uncheck it. Um, anything that you don't intend on using, you should uncheck. So even file sharing, whatever it is, just make sure that you're unchecking the things you're not going to be using. So that's just the best practice that you want to do. You want to have a least privileged environment. So basically, if you're not using Synology Drive Server and you decide to set it up at a later time and you want to access it, check it off then. Don't check it off now. So like I said a little earlier, unfortunately, this is all that you have available to you. You cannot expose anything else outside of your local network using Quick Connect other than these few services. Now, that's not to say there's anything wrong with that, uh, because honestly, for a lot of people, this is probably all that you'll need. But that is the disclaimer I have to make. So at this point, Quick Connect is enabled. You have set up the permissions, and all that's left is to test it out. So you have two options that you can do. Uh, basically, you can download any of Synology's mobile applications, and you can try and connect to them using Quick Connect. You should be able to access it. The second way that you can access it is by using Synology's DSM. So at the bottom of the general tab, you're going to see a link and that link is going to bring you directly to DSM. At that point, it's going to use Synology's relay server, but after a few seconds, you should see that it automatically brings you to DSM. Um, the one thing that I'm going to say is that since you're using Synology's relay service, the performance isn't as good as it would be if you expose the port directly. Now, I'm not going to say it's terrible because it's certainly not, but there definitely is some sort of a delay. So if you're trying to use DS Audio, for example, you're going to notice that as soon as you pull it up, there's a little bit of a delay there. It takes a little while for your music library to load, but if you give it time, it will eventually work. The same is true for any of these other services. The performance is fine, but it's not as good as it would be if you expose the ports directly and then you're connecting directly to your NAS. Basically, there is a server in between that Synology is managing and you're connecting to that server and then Synology is connecting to your NAS. So for that reason, there is some latency because you're kind of adding a middleman into this. Um, traditionally, if you just expose a port on your NAS, you are connecting to it directly. So that's one thing you have to be aware of. But overall, it generally works. It works well. Um, you are relying on Synology to keep their servers up. So keep that in mind. Uh, if Synology servers ever go down, this will not work. That's one of the downsides of it. But for the majority of people who are just trying to access their mobile applications or Synology Drive, this is a great option. So like I said earlier, this is not a security video, but I want to reiterate that if you are security conscious and you want to do um, what's best to keep your NAS as secure as possible, you probably don't want to use Quick Connect and you do want to use a VPN server. So I'll leave a link in the description on how you can set up uh, OpenVPN. But just keep that in mind because it is more secure and it will also allow you to access any of your other services. So if you're running a Docker container or you're running Plex, for example, connecting to your VPN will allow you to access those services. Quick Connect only allows you to access Synology services. So I'm hoping that this explanation helped, but if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.